This Islamic school in the Washington, D.C. suburb of Fairfax, Virginia, is open again after a COVID-induced quarantine. Many of the children who attend are immigrants from a region in China known as Xinjiang. They are Uyghurs, members of a Muslim ethnic group that live in Xinjiang. Here, children are taught the Uyghur language and literature, as well as the basics of the Islamic religion and Turkic history and culture. Almost every student in this school has family in Xinjiang. They say their relatives are either in detention camps or have died. How I know is because my uncle has been in prison. Um, his sentence was three years, but they kept him um, for 20 years. My aunt, my grandma and uncle are kept in back home and we're not allowed to see them. We're not allowed to see them and they can't come visit. My grandma or my, uh, my grandma or my grandpa because they took away their passports and we can only call them, but that's and rarely. My mother's side of my grandparents um, uh, died because of sickness and couldn't go to the hospital. These are portraits of their relatives and loved ones. They say all of them are still either in camps or unaccounted for and they accuse Chinese authorities of persecuting all ethnic minorities in Xinjiang, not just Uyghurs, but also Kazakhs, Kyrgyz and Uzbeks. Beijing denies the existence of detention camps in China. The Chinese government calls the facilities housing Uyghurs in Xinjiang vocational training schools or educational centers. The authorities emphasize these re-education measures are aimed at combating extremism and terrorism. But this policy is actually aimed at forcing assimilation, says Rutgers University law professor N.G. Abdelkader. Individuals who are viewed by the authorities as not adhering to this policy of conformity um, have been detained in internment camp. And currently there is at least one million Uyghur Muslims uh, detained in internment camp. That Beijing has euphemistically uh, named these internment camps as counterterrorism centers. Some who survived the camps and managed to flee to the U.S. have testified before Congress more than once about their experience. 44-year-old Tursunay Ziyawudun, who's ethnically Uyghur, says she was arrested twice by police and spent over 10 months in a detention camp. Many of her cellmates were arrested for practicing Islam. In the camp, I learned that most of the people were incarcerated for no reason. They have been arrested for praying, reading Quran, wearing hijab scarves, in general for practicing Islam. Inside the camp, Tursunay and all her cellmates were under 24-7 video surveillance. We were not allowed to speak our native tongue in the camp. We could not say the word Xinjiang. We were immediately corrected. There is no Xinjiang, there is only the Republic of China. Right groups, including Human Rights Watch, estimate over a million people are being held in Xinjiang camps. In the meantime, Uyghur children at this school in Fairfax are learning a traditional Uyghur dance. They are enjoying the freedom they have found in the U.S. to be who they are, Uyghurs and Muslims, a freedom that does not exist for their relatives in China. For Sanjar Hamidov in Fairfax, Virginia, NRI's VOA News.